Hey guys, today I want to go ahead and do some a uh, couple more related rates or not related rates. I'm sorry, rate accumulation, FRQ, and uh, I want to go ahead and do the problems already just to kind of facilitate the time. So now the first part, we're, first problem um, is from 2008, I believe, and uh, it's a concert tickets, um, and they went on sale at noon, and they sold out by 9 p.m. The number of people waiting in line to buy the tickets at time t is modeled by a twice differentiable function between 0 and 9 hours. The values of L of t are at various times are shown in the table. Okay, so I said the first thing says use a table to estimate the rate at which the number of people waiting in line is changing uh, at 5.5. Notice the keyword rate rate of change well what do they give us they give us a table how do you find the rate of change you're going to use your slope formula kind of from algebra one remember f of b minus f of a over b minus a in this particular situation the worst 5.5 is between here four and seven so this is your this is your a and your b okay remember just remember that t is your time that's your x okay so you're going to do L of 7 minus L of 4. That's your Y. And then um, L of 7, L of 4. Okay, so 150 minus 126 over 7 minus 4, which is your X value. And when you uh, subtract that and divide, you should get 8 people per hour. Okay. So at 5.30 p.m., you have 8 people per hour. Okay, waiting in line. All right. The second part, it says, use the trapezoidal sum with three subintervals to estimate the average number of people. And this should be a clue here, average number. You're going to use the mean value theorem. Okay, the word mean, right, remember from geometry, means the average. Okay, the average number of people waiting in line during the first four hours. So, this is easy, right, from zero to four. Okay, so it's four minus zero and then well how do you find the integral it tells us we have to use the trapezoidal sum okay remember the trapezoid is one half you have to add the bases and then the perpendicular height well what i tell my students is okay this is your base okay because these are vertical uh, trapezoids so from zero to three that's your base okay so from zero to three is three and then you're going to add this is your first height and this is your second height that you're going to add those two. So from 0 to 3 is 3 and then 120 plus 176. Okay. And there it is. So 120 plus 176. Why divide by 2? Because that's the trapezoid formula times 3. All right. The next one from 3 to 4. Okay. From 3 to 4. What's, the, what's that base? Well, that's 4. Okay. What are your heights? 176 plus 150. 176 plus 150 divided by 2 because that's part of the trapezoidal rule. And then times 4. All right, 4 is a distance from 3 to 7. And the last one, okay, from 7 to 9, well, that's 2. The base is 2. And then you're going to add 150 plus 0. All right. And divide by 2 again. So all of this is your trapezoidal rule, and when you do the math, you should get 155.25 people. That's the average number of people waiting in line during the first four hours. Okay, Part C. It says, between uh, 0 and 9 hours, what is the fewest number of times at which L prime of T is 0? And I wanted to show you guys something. Well, what's L prime of T? That's the slope. Okay, so let's say we have this function. Okay, let me just kind of show you to you this way. If you have this function and we say, well, where is the derivative equal to zero? Well, it would be here or here because that's where is where you have horizontal tangents. So if you notice here, the graph is going up, isn't it? That means the slopes, the slope is positive. And then what? The slope is negative. And then the slope is positive. So we have L prime of T equal to zero right here and right here. So... I want to show you guys something here on the table, okay? You see the y values? You see how it's increasing, increasing? And then what happens after 3? It goes what? It goes down. And then after 4, what happens? It goes up. And then after 7, what happens? It goes down. So right here you have 1, 2, 3, 
two right here, horizontal tangent, and then three right here. Okay, so that's what they're getting at. All right, well, how do you write that on the AP exam? Well, you have to tell them because L prime of T is positive between zero and three, okay, and then four and seven, all right, and actually, and uh, L prime of T is negative between three and four and seven and eight, the intermediate value theorem implies there are at least three values L prime of T equals zero, okay? And that's what you would write in order to tell them. What, uh, the other thing you can do, for those of you that are visual, you can just kind of do a, a, a number line here to let them know. And you can tell, even, you can even write horizontal tangent here, here, here. Okay, but you have to mention the intermediate value theorem, okay? That it crosses in the L prime of T is equal to zero at those points. Because remember, these are human beings, and if they can see that you demonstrated enough information to understand what you're talking about, they'll give you the points, okay? But you notice I didn't write too much, and uh, it was just straight to the point. All right, let's do uh, part D. Part D, it says the rate at which tickets were sold is modeled by this equation uh, in tickets per hour, okay? So this is a rate, all right? Notice this is a rate, okay? Based on the model, how many tickets, you see that? How many were sold by 3 p.m.? Okay, so now they're asking for a quantity, for an amount. So, and it gives them, uh, give us a rate. So what do I do? I integrate the rate. And that's going to give me the amount from 0 to 3, the first 3 hours. Put that in your calculator, you should get 973 tickets sold by 3 p.m. Not too bad. All right. Number two, I think I took this from 2009, the AP exam, okay? I didn't write it verbatim just because, uh, just to save time. Um, but it says the rate at which people enter the auditorium for a rock concert is modeled by this equation. And between the first two hours, R of T is measured in people per hour, okay? So notice, this is the rate, this is the rate, okay? No one is in the auditorium at T equals zero and when the doors open. The doors close and the concert starts at t equals 2. So 2 hours after the doors open. How many people are in the auditorium when the concert begins? Well, it begins at t equals 2. So from 0 to 2, we're going to integrate the rate again. You see that? And then it gives us 980 people. All right? And that's it. So part A usually is not too difficult. Okay? Letter B it says find the time when the rate at which the people enter the auditorium is a maximum. That's a key word. How do you find a maximum? Derivative, set it equal to zero, critical point, number line. Okay? Now, this one's a little bit different, though, okay? So, let's take the derivative. We take the derivative. Find the time when the rate, okay, this is, I want you guys to see this carefully. When the rate at which the people enter the auditorium, okay? The rate at which the people enter the auditorium is this guy, okay? Is this guy, okay? So we're going to take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and then we should end up with these two values right here okay and what you can do is you can go ahead and take the derivative by hand and then graph it and see where it crosses y equals zero okay or you can use it as an equation as well uh, equation solver but we take the derivative we set it equal to zero we get these two okay values but here's something what I want you guys to see it says find the time when the rate is the maximum at what time is basically the maximum number of people in the in the auditorium okay the maximum rate well you have to look at everything you have to look at the beginning you have to look at the middle but you also have to look at the end points because we don't know if there's a maximum in the beginning in the middle or at the end during the whole time interval so when you're doing these you got your critical points right they don't, they're not asking you where is the maximum, okay? 
Is it at t equals 0 or at t equals 2? They're asking you the value of the maximum, if that makes sense. Okay, so not necessarily, okay, which one is a maximum? No, they're asking you at what time is the maximum number of people. So for that, we have to plug in, take our 0, and we plug it in where? You plug it into this guy. You take your 1.36, you plug it in where? Into this guy. You plug in your 2, you do the same thing, you get 120. So, at what time is there the maximum? At this time, right here. At 1.36296. Okay, hours after the, the doors open. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Alright guys. Letter C. The total wait time for all the people in the auditorium, W of T, before the, the time, before they enter the auditorium, it models the total wait time. So the derivative is given by this guy. Okay. And then it says find W2 minus W1. The total wait time for those who enter the auditorium. So this is the total wait time for those who enter the auditorium. Okay. So hopefully this mix looks familiar because this is from the fundamental theorem. And this is f of b minus f of a, which is w2 minus w1. And if you notice, this all you have to do is do the integral from 1 to 2 of the, of the rate. And that gives you w2 minus w1. Well, when you plug that into your calculator, you should get 387.5. All right. Now, all you got to do is just basically put this in your calculator. R of t, you are going to have to probably write everything out, but not too bad. And you should end up with 387.5. All right. And then lastly, part C, I'm um, sorry, part D, it says, on average, how long does the person wait in the auditorium for the concert to begin? Consider all the people who enter the auditorium. Okay. So it says, how long does a person wait in the auditorium for the concert? Consider all the people who enter the auditorium after the doors open. Okay, use the model for the total wait time from part C. Okay, so we know we have to find the average, right? Well, how do you find the average of anything? Well, we are going to be doing the, fund, uh, the mean value theorem per se. Okay, well, how do you find the average of anything? You take the total amount divided by, well, how many people there are. Well, if you notice here, the total, okay, we already figured that out, is the integral. Okay, well, this is why they say consider all the people. Well, how many people are there in total? Well, there's 980. Well, where do we get 980 from? Okay, where do we get 980? Remember in the beginning? How many people are in the auditorium when the concert uh, starts? 980. Okay, so... We integrate this guy, which is uh, the wait time, divided by each person. And so each person, this is on average how much they waited. Almost 40, about a little over 45 minutes on average. All right, guys. So hopefully that makes sense. And, uh, and these uh, problems are getting a little bit easier to understand. Um, and I'll, I'll see you guys next time with some more examples, guys.